Happy Wednesday, friends. So, replayers, I am looking to see more hearts on the replay than the actual live broadcast. So, bring it on. Bring it on. Let's celebrate the Wednesday. Hey, everyone. So, thanks for hopping in. There's a little bit of a delay, I see, for a second. All right, gang, so I am seeing a tiny bit of a delay, so I'm going to ask you to do me a huge favor when you hop in and make sure you're hitting the hearts so that I know we're not having any broadcasting issues because I swear that is like an ongoing episode around here with all the travels. And those of you who are repeats, you know the deal. Throw me a little fist bump and tell me how you've got your sweat on today. Hello, Miss Jody. And anybody who's new, I want to meet you. So make sure you throw your name in so I don't have to call you M.A. Pyres 23. Yoga tonight. Oh, Jody, I'm so glad. That means you're feeling better. I love that. I love that. <gasps> Christine, yay! Love it when I see names that I know. That's exciting. Um, and Miss Lise, awesome. Thanks for the hearts, guys. Like I said, if you keep those going, then I know I'm actually still connected for one thing. Um, so can I first admit something to you? My Periscope numbers have been down lately because I haven't been broadcasting as much because, you know, I've been all over the crazy world. And at first I was kind of like bummed about it. I was like, man, that kind of blows. But then you know what I realized? The people who need this information, they're getting it. The people who actually need what I'm sharing are showing up and they're getting it. So who cares what the numbers are? God, that's a really like fabulous feeling, right? So if you are new and you're finding value here over time, I hope that you are swiping right and following. And if during the conversation you know other runners or people who need better nutrition advice when that's what we're talking about, I hope you'll feel free to take a second to swipe and share it. So today specifically, sorry, I was looking at what was behind me. Today specifically, we're going to talk about taper because there are so many fall races coming up and everybody's getting super excited, but they're also getting a little bit crazy and a little bit nervous and Ah, it's like the one part of the plan that we don't talk about. And I actually realized, even on the website, 2,000 articles. And I've really not gone into how to do taper the right way. That's bananas, people. So I'm going to give you a little insight because you showed up today. All right, for those of you who are new, first let me just say hello, and then I'll dive straight into the content, no making you wait. I am Amanda from Run to the Finish. I am obviously a passionate runner, but I am a running coach. I am a certified personal trainer. And, you know, I spend my days talking about running and getting paid to do it. So it's pretty great. I love it. I want to get everyone out there who chooses to and wants to. And that's why I'm here. Throughout, if you guys have questions, always I try to answer them, um, and especially when this is a topic you kind of have questions about while I'm talking, throw them out. I am recording these and trying to use them later when possible, so I may not always answer your question immediately. Okay, taper. All right. One of the biggest mistakes I see with taper is the duration. So how many of you have a plan that you probably found either in a magazine or in a book? It's not one that was like custom made for you, but it's a plan that you've followed before for different races. Give me a heart or a hands. I know a number of you have custom plans because you're my athletes. Mm -hmm. So anybody following just a generic plan that you've got? Okay, I see the hearts. All right. So if you're following a lot of the generic plans, that's what I did when I first started. And I noticed repeatedly I would show up to race day and instead of feeling like refreshed and energized, I felt lethargic and my legs just didn't want to go. And I couldn't quite figure out why. I followed what it said and it was like a three week taper. Okay, so that's three weeks where my body should have been recuperating, right? But instead I felt worse. So then I started doing what every good runner does. 
who wants to coach themselves and coach others, I researched the hell out of it. And then I made myself a guinea pig for years on end. And what I found was truly that a three-week taper is too long for just about everyone. And there is some science behind it. So there's a little bit of like you've reached this peak because that's what happens before you start taper. So you have pushed and pushed and pushed. And then you reach this peak and then you have this massive drop off. And literally your brain and your body are like hibernation. They're done. They're ready to stop. But if you do a two week taper, that's where the magic really seems to happen. That's where I saw myself starting to hit PRs consistently. That's where I've seen my athletes start to hit PRs consistently. And at first, it's really scary because you're used to this idea that there's like a three-week gap and that you need all three weeks to let your legs and your body and everything recover. But that three weeks turns out to be too much time. Now, once you hit taper, if you've been following a good plan you'll be really ready for it. So I can tell you that, like a lot of people, when I used to hit taper, I was like kind of crazy and nuts and sort of like, what do I do with all this energy? But if you've been really following a plan that has you with an actual peak week of running, oh, taper is like, hello, nirvana. <laughs> You're tired and you should be tired. That's what should happen during peak week. During peak week, you are going to the max in terms of what you're getting your body to do. And so then those next weeks feel like a good recovery. That week after just feels like normal recovery. And then the following week, it's already race week. So now you've got the logistics of the race and you're thinking about some of those things and the week just goes by like that. So that two weeks seems to work a lot better. But the key is having that really solid peak week designed for you and put into practice. So then you've got your two weeks. So then the next thing that I see everyone doing is we sort of say, okay, you've got this extra time, which means you have this extra energy. So tackle projects that you've forgotten about or things that you keep putting off. No, <laughs> that shit can wait another two weeks. Put it off till after the race. You need to not only physically but mentally de-stress for those two weeks. And you know what happens is as soon as you start picking up one of those other things, you dive in wholeheartedly, gusto, like I'm going to get it done. And, and then all of a sudden you're really stressed about it and trying to still fit in some of the runs. And then of course the runs have a little bit of speed work. And so suddenly instead of your body getting relaxed and ready for optimal performance, you have jacked your cortisol right back up. It's one of the things we forget about with training. But the stress that our body goes through isn't just because of training, it's because of everything that's happening in our lives. So when you get that advice to use all your free time to go work on all those other projects, say, that's cool, I'm going to do it after the race. Because after the race is when I don't want you to run. It's when we all make the mistake of wanting to run way too quickly again. So get yourself absorbed in some of those post-race projects and skip doing them in advance. All right. The other thing really to focus on during taper week, I know, Jody, you're probably the queen of that because you always have a million things going. So, <laughs> yes. So we've said that we're going to shorten our taper. We've said that we're not going to tackle all of those insane projects. And then the third thing that we're going to do is we really are going to think about nutrition. So during training, it's really easy to kind of be like, okay, after my run, I have a green smoothie. But then during taper, you've got these days where you're not working out. And so a lot of those triggered habits, the I run, then I have a green smoothie, don't happen. So then we stop having the green smoothie because we didn't run. Instead, we're just going to try. We've got two weeks. It's only two weeks. It's a very short time frame. And we're just going to try to keep going with those little things that we're optimizing nutrition throughout. All right. Yeah, it's really easy to do. Really easy to do. Okay, gang. Um, that was, you know, like I said, a super fun Wednesday. I'm all about hump day. I think it's funny. Zoom. The rest of the week flies by. So that was your Wednesday runner scope. 
I know we had a bunch of people hop on and then a bunch of people leave, so I have no idea if this topic just did not resonate for you guys or what. But like I said, I know the people who need it are the people who are here. So I'm not going to worry about the rest. 